So begin by chanting Jai Radha Madhava. Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari the Yatra key. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to forget that part. <laughs> so this is a particular class every year that causes me great fright. <laughs> at the same time, great happiness because I know I'm not at all even close to trying to speak on this particular subject matter. By the mercy of Radharani, maybe we can say something. 
Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda 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 Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaudabhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaudha Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya 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 Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Chaitanya Charinam Vita Charitam Vita Not Charinam Vita Close anyway it's both sweet anyway. <laughs> they both have flowing sweetness. <laughs> so this is uh, Adi Lila chapter 4, verse number 55, and then 56 will be the class. So, and this is, uh, this is the famous verse that's quoted quite often, describing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a combination of Shishi, Radha, and Krishna in one. So I don't know if we can do anything in response here, but let's try. Radha Krishna Pranay Vrikti Haladni Shakti Asman Ekapmana Vapi Bhuvi Pura Deha Beta Gato To Chaitanya Kyam Prakatham Maduna Tadayam Chakyam Aptam Radha Bhavi Duti Suvalitam Nami Krishna Surupam Translation, the loving affairs of Sri Radha and Krishna are transcendental manifestations of the Lord's internal pleasure-giving potency. Although Radha and Krishna are one in their identity, they separated themselves eternally. Now these two transcendental identities have again united in the form of Sri Krishna Chaitanya. I bow down to him who has manifested himself with the sentiment and complexion of Srimati Radharani, although he is Krishna himself. So Prabhupada gives a two-line purport. The text, this text, is from the diary of Srila Sarup Damodar Goswami. It appears as the fifth of the first 14 verses of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Verse number 56. Radha Krishna Eka Atma Dui De Hadari. Anyonya Vilasa Rasa Aswadana Kari. Radha Krishna Eka Atma Dui De Hadari Anyonya Vilasa Rasa Asvadana Kari Radha Krishna Eka Atma Dui De Hadari Anyonya Vilasa Rasa Asvadana Kari Anyone would like to try? Radha Krishna Eka Atma Dui De Hadari Radha Krishna Eka Atma Dui De Hadari Anjone Vilashi Rasha Ashvadhana Kari Anjone Vilashi Rasha Ashvadhana Kari Radha Krishna Eka Atma Dui De Hadari Radha Krishna Eka Atma Dui De Hadari Okay, 
Any ladies would like to try? Anyone else? Radha Krishna Eka Atma Duida Radhari Radha Krishna Radha and Krishna Eka One Atma Self Dui Two Deha Bodies Dari Assuming, anyonye, one another, vilase, they enjoy, rasa, the mellows of love, asvadanakari, tasting. Mm. Translation, Radha and Krishna are one and the same, but they have assumed two bodies, thus they enjoy each other, tasting the mellows of love. Purport. The, tran the two transcendentalists, Radha and Krishna, are a puzzle to the materialist. The above description of Radha and Krishna from the diary of Srila Sarup Dhammada Goswami is a condensed explanation. But one needs great spiritual insight to understand the mysteries of these two personalities. One is enjoying in two. Sri Krishna is the potent factor and Srimati Radharani is the internal potency. According to Vedanta philosophy, there is no difference between the potent and the potency. They are identical. We cannot differentiate between one and the other any more than we can separate fire from heat. <laughs> Everything in the absolute truth is inconceivable in relative existence. Therefore, in relative awareness, it is very difficult to assimilate this truth of the oneness between the potent and the potency. The philosophy of inconceivable oneness and difference propounded by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the only source of understanding for such intricacies of transcendence. In fact, Radharani is the internal potency of Krishna and she eternally intensifies the pleasures of Krishna. Impersonalists cannot understand this without the help of Mahabhagavat devotee. The very name Radha suggests that Srimati Radharani is the eternally the topmost mistress of the comforts of Sri Krishna. As such, she is the medium of transmitting the living entity's service to Sri Krishna. Devotees in Vrindavan therefore seek the mercy of Srimati Radharani in order to be recognized as loving servitors of Sri Krishna. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally approaches the fallen conditioned souls of the age to deliver the highest principle of transcendental relationship with the Lord. The activities of Lord Chaitanya are primarily in the role of the pleasure given portion of his internal potency. The Absolute Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, is the omnipotent form of transcendental existence, knowledge and bliss in full. His internal potency is exhibited first as sat or existence, or in other words, as the same potency displays full knowledge, it is called chit, or samvit, which expands the transcendental forms of the Lord. Finally, when the same potency plays as pleasure-giving medium, it is known as Ladini, or the transcendental blissful potency. Thus, the Lord manifests his internal potency in three transcendental divisions. Om Jnana Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda 
Sri Advaita Gadadara Siva Siddhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. So Radha and Krishna are actually one but they have separated themselves in order to enjoy transcendental loving exchange and this is the highest understanding of the activities of the absolute truth that the Lord is the manifestation of all expansions and energies that come in various forms with various uh, what we say energies in order to facilitate his different desires both in the material realm and the spiritual realm but in the highest aspects of that in the spiritual realm it's about loving exchange between the Lord and his parts and parcels in this case the Lord is actually exchanging with his most intimate part of his own self as he expands himself in his different energies one for knowledge by that energy he knows everything one for maintenance he knows every, he knows everything that it, he knows how everything is going on everywhere. But one for pleasure. The pleasure given potency is the essence of life because each and every one of us are always looking for pleasure. As Srila Prabhupada would say, the goal of life is to experience pleasure. And that is the internal nature of the soul's existence. Activities that we perform Ultimately, we desire to lead to some type of pleasure, and therefore whatever we do, or what, how we live in our, our life, is centered around giving ourselves pleasure, and maybe pleasure to others also. So everything centers around that, and Radharani is that manifestation of the highest pleasure potency in existence. And that has nothing to do with the apparent activities of the conditioned souls in this material world who seek pleasure through the mind, through the senses, through the intelligence. And in that type of pleasure, as it says in the Bhagavad Gita, it simply leads to suffering. But Radharani manifests herself as Bhakti Devi, and she is the uh, uh, manifestation of pure devotional service to Krishna. And there are many manifestations that spring from that kind of, that energy of pure devotional service, which she is the perfection of that, and the source of that also. Not only the perfection, but she is the source of all pleasure coming on the spiritual platform. And therefore, it says that any pleasure that you can experience in your existence with Krishna is simply a drop of the unlimited ocean of pleasure that exists and as Srimati Radharani. <laughs> she is Bhakti Devi in the, the real, in the complete sense of the word. And there are many verses that explain that Krishna cannot find pleasure anywhere except through Radharani. <laughs> he, he, exp he enjoys pleasure with other living entities. But that really is to give pleasure to the other living entities. And he's also enjoying in that pleasure because in that exchange of love based on service with the desire to please, there is that element of exchange that gives happiness, pleasure, satisfaction to the soul. But with Radharani, it's a complete different experience. In that, in that relationship with him, he enjoys unlimitedly. And if there is some reason why he can't experience that pleasure, he thinks that everything else is useless. <laughs> There's one verse where he says, I look around at everything and without Radharani, nothing has any value. <laughs> so what is he speaking from the ecstasy of love for Srimati Radharani? And she, is, she manifests herself in many forms of herself because Krishna has an unlimited desire to experience pleasure. So it mentions that she expands herself as the gopis of Vrindavan. They are all her, what we say, uh, energies that are actually coming from her. She is the source of all the gopis. 
She is the source of all the Lakshmis in Vaikuntha. She is the source of all the queens in, Vrindav in Dwarka. So we, we see that Krishna in his different manifestations will enjoy pleasure with different female counterparts, which are all expansions of Srimati Radharani. <laughs> so her volume of service to Krishna is unlimited. Therefore, when we try to understand Srimati Radharani, we just, you know, we just have to keep quiet because we can't say anything. It's not possible. And Prabhupada used to say that. He would say, there's two things you can never understand. No one will ever understand. It's not possible to understand. And that is Radharani's love for Krishna and Krishna's qualities, <laughs> which attracts Radharani's love. And... Uh, That love manifests itself in different aspects of itself in order to, you know, facilitate the pleasure of Krishna. And on this particular day, we understand the mercy manifestation of Krishna, because it's mentioned here, and it's also mentioned so many places, that out without the mercy of Radharani, one cannot get the mercy of Krishna. It's not possible. Therefore, we beg and pray and, and somehow or other try to please Srimati Radharani. So by her mercy, then the conditioned souls can actually get a opportunity to connect with Krishna in loving devotional service. Therefore, the spiritual master, as it's mentioned in the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita at the very beginning, is either a manifestation of the internal energy of Srimati Radharani or the manifestation of the internal energy of uh, Nityananda. <laughs> and both the, the, the spiritual masters who come in that the form in order to perform the service of uplifting the conditioned souls and engaging them in devotional service represent either one of these two categories, and sometimes a combination of both. So in that, Radharani manifests her love, or her energy, through that spiritual master. And when one, one, one pleases the spiritual master, one gets the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And by getting the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one can enter into the mood of Vrindavan. And what is that mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? That is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. Golokera, Premadana, Hare Nam, Shankirtan, Ratin Jan, Milokena Upai. That this chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra has nothing to do with anything in the three worlds. It is actually the, ener the pure spiritual energy which enchants the entire spiritual world where Radha and Krishna dance together under the, to the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And so it is a very, what we say, powerful and very available manifestation of the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which qualifies one. Therefore, it says that when, when one develops, and this is the important point, one develops ruchi, or a sweet taste, for chanting the holy name of the Lord. I was just, uh, I was just remembering, I was at the uh, Birmingham Kirtan Mela, I think it was back in the weekend of July 9 and 10 here in Birmingham. And then I had met this one lady, who I know, she's also, she's from South London. And she came up to me and she said, Maharaj, I want your blessings. I want to chant 64 rounds a day. I said, uh, hmm, you know, you know, it's not something you just say, oh, yeah, okay, you know. <laughs> you, know you know, you can't, the blessings have to also match the, the qualification. <laughs> so I said, uh, yeah, she, 
And I said, well, you know, that's, that's a big, you know, you know rata, to, to 64 rounds a day. She said, well, I'm chanting 34 round, 32 rounds a day already. I've been doing it for years. But now I want to chant more. And then she st started to cry. <laughs> that really works, you know. <laughs> Helps to get the blessings. <laughs> so she started to cry. And then what she was expressing, she said, now I know everything is in the holy name. <laughs> I've been experiencing my, my chanting, and I'm just, I'm so happy to chant. I just want to chant more. And I said, she said, I just, all I want to do is chant. <laughs> That's all she said. I said, whatever blessings I can give you, you can have it. <laughs> so, and so she was actually on that platform of tasting the sweetness of the chanting of the holy name. She just wanted to chant more and more and more. So the Maha Mantra is actually Radha and Krishna. Come in the form of transcendental sound vibration. Hare is the vocative, the calling. And so before we can actually approach Krishna, we call to Krishna in the form of his pleasure potent, Sri Radharani, and say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. So someone asked Prabhupada, what does Rama mean? Who does it refer to? Does that refer to uh, Ramchandra? Prabhupada said, yes. Does it refer to Balaram? Prabhupada said, yes. <laughs> does it refer to Krishna? Prabhupada said, yes. <laughs> so, but for those who have the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, bhakti, it actually refers to Krishna in the sense that it's Radhika Raman. A Radhika Raman. So when we chant the Hare Krishna man mantra, following the mood of the Brajabhasis, we're actually chanting Radha and Krishna throughout the entire mantra. <laughs> this is the sweetness or the essence or the esoteric meaning for those who have that mood of Braj. <laughs> Sweet. But I'd like to speak a little bit about Srimati Radharani's appearance. It's a very sweet, very concise little pastime. I think it's appropriate that we honor her appearance in the world. And she's appeared in different millenniums accordingly. And one time, Srila Prabhupada, uh, he was giving a lecture on Radharani's appearance day. And he said, and King Vrishabhanu, the father of Radharani, he was plowing the field. And as he was plowing the field, his plow hit this box. And he took a shook the dirt off, and it was a beautiful golden box. And he opened it up, and there was a beautiful little girl in there. And he took that girl and made it her daughter, his daughter. And then we, then we questioned Prabhupada. Uh, Prabhupada, that's, uh, that, that's uh, Janaka finding Sita. <laughs> He said, no. <laughs> he said, Radharani comes in different forms, in different ways, and this is one way she appears. <laughs> so that's interesting. But the common pastime that we all hear is Kirtida and Vishubhanu, husband and wife, living in Ravel at the time. They prayed from within our heart, please give us a child that is of your divine essence. And they performed austerities and prayed for within their heart. And then one day, Vishubhanu was on the banks of the Jamuna. And he was there to about to take his bath. But then he looked into the Jamuna and he saw this beautiful effulgence rising from the Jamuna River. And it was, he couldn't understand what it was. It was just engulfing the entire atmosphere. At that time, Lord Brahma appeared to him. And then Brahma went immediately to that effulgence. And what it was was a gigantic lotus flower that was floating on the Jamuna. And then Brahma looked inside, and there was a beautiful little tiny girl. And he picked up the girl, and he brought it over to Vishubhanu and said, here is the fulfillment of all your desires. She is the divine energy of the Supreme Lord. He didn't say her name. <laughs> And Vrishubhana was 
so satisfied and so happy, immediately he wanted to give that happiness to his wife. He took the child home and explained, my dear wife, this is the fulfillment of all of our desires. The Supreme Lord has shown his mercy. We have a beautiful little girl as our child. And Kirti Da was so happy. But there was one thing about the child. They noticed her eyes remained closed. She don't, didn't open her eyes. And this went on for some time, and she didn't speak. She remained completely quiet. In fact, she didn't even make a sound. There was no sound, nothing. And they were thinking, is she blind? Maybe she can't speak. This is really, she's so beautiful. And so, we can't stop looking at her. <laughs> And uh, this went on for some time. Then one day, Narada Muni Bhajai Vina Radhika Ramana Nahamre. He comes for in on his, carrying his Vina. He knows what's going on. He heard that the internal potency of the Supreme Lord has manifested in this area, in this realm of the earth. And so he came to the house of Rishabhanu. And he was greeted very nicely, and then he said, you have a child that was just recently born? Yes, can I? Yeah, you can see her, she's there in that cradle. He went over and he looked, and he got ecstatic, and he started dancing <laughs> and singing. And Rishabhan and his wife thinking, hmm. Maybe he's been flying too much. Or <laughs> he's a little break or something. <laughs> he was just spinning around the cradle in ecstasy. He was so happy. And he started re reciting verses from the Shastra. And then after that, he simply left. <laughs> he got his darshan of Srimati Radharani. And later on, he composed the Narada Bhakti Sutras. And Srila Prabhupada, one of the first treatises or books that Prabhupada started to translate when he started his movement was the Narada Bhakti Sutras. That was even before the Nectar Devotion. That was back in 1967. And he started to, tra and he did, he did 13 verses. And then he got the idea, I think I should deliver Nectar Devotion. And they didn't have much time, energy, or money at the time, so he switched and stopped. Later on, Satsrup Maharaj finished the book, Nardi Bhakti Sutra Sutras. But that was Prabhupada's desire to give that book. But then he understood nectar devotion. And it's interesting because we hear that uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is non different than Krishna. And Chaitanya Charitamrita represents Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But nectar devotion is the manifestation of Srimati Radharani. Hmm. And this was stated by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And nectar devotion is non different than Radharani because it comprises the entire essence of pure devotional service, the essence, not the whole science. No one can comprise the whole science in one book. Even the Vedas can't even, ex all of their books together cannot describe pure devotional service. It's as limited, unlimited as Krishna himself. And so, Prabhupada said about nectar devotion, read it once, read it twice, read it thrice. <laughs> he said, this book, is, once you understand this book, at least get a working knowledge of that book, and you know the whole science of how to execute devotional service, because it's a great science. It's the science of love, that love, how to awaken love for Krishna. <laughs> and there's so many examples in there on how that's done by the, inter by the eternal associates of Krishna. So now, Kirtida and you know, Rishabhanu, they're, they're happy with this beautiful baby, but they're thinking, no sound, doesn't look at anyone. <laughs> 
But then they decided, let's have a festival and honor the appearance of the child into our life, and we'll call many of the villagers. So they did, and they wanted to have a nice festival to honor Radharani's appearance in their home. And they called Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yasoda, and they came. And Krishna was there also. And Krishna was not much older than Radharani. <laughs> I think he's a year and one month older, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so Krishna came, and he's just a little kid. <laughs> and he, uh, when he came into the house, he went right to the cradle, <laughs> and he looked in. As soon as he looked in, she went. <laughs> Much better than I did it. But <laughs> <laughs> she smiled and she opened her eyes. And the first thing she wanted to see was Krishna. In fact, that's all she wants to see, just Krishna. So she was so, uh, you know, pleased. And therefore, she's known as Krishna Mai. She is Krishna externally, she is Krishna internally. There's a beautiful story, which is a pastime on the life of Jayadev Goswami. Jayadev Goswami was an author of many spiritual literatures, especially Radha Krishna's pastimes in Sri Vrindavan Dham. And he penned one particular book, which Prabhupada said, don't read. <laughs> and that was Gita Govinda. It's the most deep and sweet and most intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. It's not for, what we say, it's only for those devotees who are on the, what we say, the liberated platform, the Rasika platform, that are fixed in the mood of Braj and are on the highest platform. Prabhupada said, we shouldn't read this book. <laughs> You will, you will not be able to understand. And you may also misinterpret. And so he's writing, Gita Govinda. And then while he's writing, a thought comes into his mind. And the thought is, Lord Sri Krishna places his head at the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. And then he's thinking, that doesn't sound right. Where did that thought come from? But then he was thinking, no, Krishna is like, he is the source of everything. He is the greatest of all. Everyone worships Krishna. How can I write that? So he didn't write it. And he thought, all right, I'll continue to write. But when he started, decided to write, he couldn't write. Nothing came. His mind was blank turns to his wife, Padmavati. He said, Padmavati, I think it's time for prasadam. You prepare lunch. I'm going down to the Ganga for bathing, and I'll be back. And he was living in the area of Jagannath Puri at the time. And uh, so she prepares lunch, and then Krishna takes the form of Jayadev, comes into the house of, of Jayadev, and sits down and acts like he's Jayadev, and he wants prashad. So Padmavati, thinking that's their husband, but it was actually Krishna, she serves him a meal. <laughs> and Krishna's eating, and he's, you know, happy. And he leaves some remnants, and then he gets up, and he goes over to his book, and he writes in the book, Krishna, Sri Krishna, places his head at the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani, turns around and leaves. <laughs> and then the real Jayadev goes, Swami comes, comes into the house, he says to his wife, where is lunch? She says, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Maybe that happens on our, our level too sometimes. <laughs> so he, he, she, she said, you were just here, you just had lunch. She said, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm just coming back from my bath. You know, you were here. You took lunch and you got up and you wrote in your book. Go look over at your book. So she went, he went over there and he saw you know, Sri Krishna places his head at the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani. 
And when he, when he read that, he understood. Krishna came in, in, in disguise and wrote that. So he said to his wife, you are so fortunate. <laughs> you have served and also received the remnants of the, the prasadam of Sri Krishna. And he started to glorify his wife. So that's, that's an interesting pastime because it just illustrates um, how there is Madan, Mohan, Mohini, right? And Madan, who's Madan? Madan is Cupid. <laughs> uh, Cupid works in this material world. He is the person who is the most popular. He attracts the conditioned souls to each other, the male to the female, the female to the male. He goes with his arrows, his arrows of love, and he goes, <coughs> shoots that arrow, and <coughs> oh, it's love, 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 love. <laughs> Something like that, anyway. <laughs> Everybody, they say, you fall in love. <laughs> Something, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, there's something to it. I'm not an expert in these categories, but anyway. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah. So Madan, he can attract anyone. If one, because that attracting feature is there, Prabhupada said, just like you, we are naturally attracted to the supreme personality of Godhead, but we are covered due to our association with matter. But that natural attraction is there. He said, just like the attraction in the material world between man and woman and woman and man is natural. Nobody has to learn it. But there's a higher force, and that is Krishna. And Krishna is the attractor of one who is attracting everyone. He is Madan Mohan. And therefore, he can attract those who are being attracted by Madan in the material world. And that means he can... When, when one gets attracted to Krishna, one loses their attraction for this material energy. In fact, that's the only way one can get free from the attraction of material energy is become attracted to Krishna. But that attraction is natural. So tr Krishna is even more powerful than Cupid because he can attract Cupid and he can attract all of Cupid's mm, subjects. But then there's another person who is Madan Mohan Mohini. And that she attracts that person who attracts everyone, and that is Srimati Radharani. So she is the best of all attracting. And Prabhupada said she is very merciful. Just like on this particular day, we fast half a day, right? But on John Mastami, we fast a whole day. So who's more merciful? <laughs> Radharani ki jai, Maharani ki jai, Varsanavali ki jai, jai, jai. And Prabhupada said, it is natural. Mother is always more kinder than father. <laughs> if you get, you know, you, your father chastises you, run to your mother and she helps you. It's okay. <laughs> the mother is more kind. So Prabhupada uses that. So she is our spiritual mother. And she awakens our attraction for Krishna. And when, when, he, when she shows her mercy, then we can engage in devotional service to Krishna. And Krishna, when he, he cannot refuse if Radharani recommends someone. And Radharani is always trying to give pleasure to Krishna. And that is the essence of bhakti, is to try to give pleasure to Krishna. And how does she do that? In the spiritual world, she does that in one way, and through, the, through her different energies, she does it through the material world. In the material world, she inspires those who serve her to engage in preaching Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada said, preaching is in the rasa of Madhurya Ras. Mm -hmm. Book distribution is in the, in the mood of Madhurya Ras, because it's bringing the conditioned souls to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and connecting them with that, with that process of devotional service. And so that is the mood of the gopis, especially Srimati Radharani. Krishna wants to be with another gopi. And 
Radharani wants to be with Krishna, but she knows Krishna wants to be with another gopi, so she thinks Krishna should get the best service when he's with that other gopi. Therefore, I have to go to that other gopi and teach that gopi how to serve Krishna, how to please Krishna in the best way. And therefore, she goes, and she apparently uh, sacrifices her own desire to be with Krishna in order to give pleasure to Krishna who wants to be with another gopi. That's not always. That's sometimes. <laughs> sometimes when Krishna is with another gopi and Radharani was waiting for Krishna, she thinks, what's wrong? One time Krishna said, Radharani, we'll meet tonight. Yeah, okay. So, and they made a plan. So Radharani gets there first and she's waiting, she's waiting and waiting and Krishna's not coming. He's not coming at all and she's waiting and waiting. She's getting more impatient. Where's that rascal? <laughs> and, not coming. So Lalita comes and says, Radha, something wrong? Oh, I'm supposed to meet Krishna and he's late. Now I've been waiting and waiting. I'll go find him. So Lalita goes. She's uh, the trusted servant of Radharani. She's her friend, but she also serves Radharani. And she goes to the rival camp of the gopis, which is, there are two camps. There is the uh, camp of Srimati Radharani and the camp of Chandravali. And they're two different moods. One is contrary and favorable. That's Radharani's camp. And when the other one is only favorable. In other words, in Ra Chandravali, she also manifested herself as Rukmini in, in Dwarka. That mood is to serve Krishna in a very sweet way and always be sweet and loving and obedient to Krishna. But with Radharani, she's, sometimes she gets angry at Krishna. <laughs> and Krishna likes that. <laughs> if you want life to be exciting, you know, you gotta mix it up a little bit. <laughs> if, it's, if it's just, you know, well, you know, I don't know, I can't really say because I'm not expert in these things, but anyway, it, I heard, anyway, that if you want your marriage to be really exciting, you should have a fight every once in a while and keep things, you know, keep things moving and going and just, uh, you know, you get to know each other more. <laughs> That's one of the reasons. But, you know, the fight has to be with love. <laughs> Without the love, then if it's just a fight, then it's, just, it's totally material. Or it's actually you know, divisive. So, so Radharani is in that mood, but he knows that Krishna likes that. So, so, so Lalita, she finds Krishna in the camp of Chandravali with another gopi. Ah, you rascal, you were supposed to be with my master. Now, look, look I'm, and she runs, oh, she's headed back to Radharani. Krishna said, oh, no, now I'm in trouble. <laughs> So he's following behind, you know, she tells Radharani, but Krishna arrives just right after that, and she immediately, she says, you rascal, <laughs> I don't want to talk to you, I'm, go away. <laughs> she, she doesn't want to have anything to do with him. And she goes really deep into her anger, she says, oh, she's got a blue sari, she says, I'm going to throw that blue sari away, because it reminds me of Krishna. Her bird cage, she has a blue bird cage, she throws that. Jamuna's blue, I don't want to see that. Reminds me of Krishna. Now Krishna's now stuck. He's thinking, what can I do? Radharani's angry with me. He's not gonna talk to me. He's not gonna she's not gonna associate with me. This is horrible. So I have to do something. What should I do? Then he remembers, oh, there is Rinda. Rinda Rinda is the uh, she is, of course, we know her also as Tulsi Maharani, but she, manifests, she is actually a gopi in the spiritual world known as Rindadev. And she assists Purnamasi in making arrangements for the Radha and Krishna's pastimes and the gopis' pastimes with Krishna. So she helps out. She also knows, she knows the logic of how to bring Radha and Krishna together. So Krishna goes to Vrinda, 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 I got a problem. <laughs> Radharani is not talking to me. Oh, let's go. Let's 
not so bad. Let's work out something. Yeah, Radharani's also, she's not, she's, because of that, she's not happy either. But she's not changing at the same time. So maybe we can find out. All right, so you dress up as a gopi. And you put on a sari. <laughs> and, you know, gopi dots and little mendi here and there, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and Krishna dressed up and, ooh, he looks really beautiful. <laughs> one of the extra gopis that doesn't fit in, but anyway. <laughs> so Radha, Krishna, he's so, and he's so beautiful that even he's even the most beautiful in the female category also. And so he's, he goes where Radharani and her gopis are, and uh, uh, the gopis say, who's this girl? We never saw her before. She must be a new one. <laughs> So, uh, and she says, well, I'm an astrologer, and I heard that Radharani is not happy, so I came to read her astrology and give her some solutions to her suffering. Oh, okay. So they tell Radharani. Radharani says, bring her. She looks at her. Hmm. She looks different. She looks like somebody I know. <laughs> and Krishna is very good at hiding himself. So he said, yes, Srimati Radharani, I've come to uh, get, uh, help you overcome your suffering. So please let me read your feet. She, she extends her hand. She says, no, I want to read the lines on your feet because he wants to hold her feet. <laughs> That's Krishna. So he's looking, and you'll see, it's in, there's a picture of that. And he said, hmm, yes, it's easy to understand what is the course of your suffering, and I also have the solution. Your suffering is because you have rejected Krishna, and the solution is you should bring Krishna back. <laughs> <laughs> Radharani said, what, this astrologer is bogus, get her out of here. <laughs> And she starts getting angry again. And then the Krishna, in the form of the astrology, has to get out of there fast. And so he leaves and goes back to Vrinda. It didn't work. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> I have second plan. All right. All right, don't worry, there's many plans. <laughs> so this time she said, you dress up as an, uh, a sannyasi. <laughs> And you get, you know, put on the deer skin and you have a dunda, you know, your common day lupat. And you go to Radharani and you come and you're, you're, you're begging, you know, you're begging, you know, bakshish. <laughs> uh, the swamis are supposed to be beggars. Not in ISKCON. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada said to, this, to the Grihastas, if you need any money, Go to the sannyasis. <laughs> it's still true today. <laughs> so, yeah, but categorizing according to <laughs> tradition, they're beggars. <laughs> so when she went, and this astrologer went and all dressed up Krishna. And the gopi said, oh, a sannyasi. We can get some blessings. Uh, yes, I've come. I've heard that Radharani is not feeling good. I'm going to give her some blessings and relieve her from her misery. Okay, and they bring her over to Rad Radharani. sees, oh, a nice sannyasi. One sannyasi, how can we serve you? What can we do? And they start offering him different things. He said, this is very nice, but I've came to give some advice. I know Radharani is suffering, and therefore I have the solution to her suffering. You know, sannyasis, they know everything. Don't believe that. <laughs> Someone said to Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, you know everything. Prabhupada said, I'm not Krishna. <laughs> but I know what I need to know. <laughs> that's what he said. And that's how he answered that. So, yeah. So Radharani said, oh, okay. So give us a blessing. The blessing is, I want to relieve you of your suffering. Therefore, you should invite Krishna back into your life. Mm. 
can't refuse a sannyasi. Remember that. <laughs> well, you can scratch that from the tape. <laughs> but anyway, Radharani says, what can we do? We have to agree with the sannyasis. <laughs> so then Krishna is back in good standing again. So this is a nice pastime. So that Radharani will get angry and she'll exhibit different moods of her emotion towards Krishna. And it'll ex experience different things. When Krishna was leaving Rindavan to go to Mathura, when Akura came to bring Krishna out on the plea of um, killing Kamsa, uh, the gopis were completely, oh my God, they were just thinking, Krishna's leaving? My, this is not possible. Krishna leaves Vrindavan, there's no meaning to Vrindavan. There's no meaning to anything. And, uh, but Krishna was determined to go, along with Balaram. And, and the Kaur was there, and the gopis chastised the Kaur. They said, Kaur, your name is Akura. Now the word Akura means kind. But they, they said, well actually, your name is Kura, not Akura. Your name is cruel. <laughs> You're cruel. You're causing cruelty to everyone by taking Krishna outside of Vrindavan. And later on, you'll understand there's another pastime that happened later when Akura was involved with some plot to get the Samantaka jewel. And the reason he did that, he acted against Krishna at that time. It's because he was cursed by the gopis because the gopis were angry at Akura for taking Krishna out of Vrindavan. So he had to suffer that curse, although it was his service. It was an interesting pastime. And, but Radharani, when she saw Krishna leaving, she thought, it's not possible. <laughs> and Lalita was there along with Vishak and they said, don't worry, Krishna's not leaving. It just looks like he's leaving. He's still here. <laughs> you can go into the forest and you can find him there. So she went into the forest and she's searching around. And because she has so much love for Krishna, she sees Krishna everywhere, even when he's not apparently there. But she sees her in her own love and ex as expressed in the, on the images that come into her mind. And she thinks she's seeing Krishna. But after some time, she realized Krishna is gone. But Krishna, when he left Vrindavan, he said something. He said something really interesting. He said, I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. And that statement gave everyone in Vrindavan the hope that Krishna would soon return. So every day, towards the evening time, you know, Krishna would come in the evening time when he was in Vrindavan, and after playing with his friends and the cows, he would return for his supper. And uh, so they would go, thinking that Krishna would be returning again at that time. And they would go to the edge of Vrindavan, and Krishna would never return. And this went on for so many years. And Radharani, she made a statement. She said, my dear Krishna, you are like a hunter. And you have some animals, and you've locked those animals in a house, and you set the, uh, the house on fire, and the animals are suffering in the fire, but you've locked the door and they can't get out. I am suffering in this fire of separation from you, and I want to simply die, but I can't because you locked the door by saying, I'll be back. Because you said, I'll be back, I have to live. <laughs> but I want to die because there's no reason to life without you. That's a, to, see, to illustrate how much of Radharani, how much Radharani has devotion to Krishna. And Radharani, she would cook for Krishna. Mother Yasoda had discovered that Radharani is a really good cook. Those of you who cook, you should know you are under the care of Srimati Radharani. She is in control of the, of the kitchen that cooks for Krishna. 
So when we when we're in the kitchen working, we're working under the care of Shrimati Radharani. We're following her, her, her guidance in preparing for Krishna's meals. So Yasoda, she was thinking, she cooks so nicely with such devotion. And Krishna also agreed. So she would leave every day Yadvat and come to Nandagram to cook for Krishna. But in her ecstasy, she would get lost trying to find the way to Nandagram, and she would go in the wrong way. So after some time, her gopi friends would accompany her to lead her because she was always in ecstasy thinking she's going to cook for Krishna, and then she couldn't find her way to Nandagram. So after some time, they led her there. She would come in, go in with the kitchen with Mother Yasoda, and she would assist Mother Yasoda, and she would also cook. So one time she cooked, and Krishna would look into the kitchen. He would peek, he'd hide, nobody would see him. And every time he'd look just to see Radharani was cooking. And if she looked, she could sense that he was looking, she'd look over there and he'd hide. She'd never catch him. <laughs> and Krishna was thinking, oh, she's cooking. And so he would be there waiting for breakfast. And he'd have some of his cowherd friends there and they'd be ready. So one time Radharani cooked this really nice, special preparation for Krishna, just for him. She wanted only for him. So she made this preparation. It was, it was a sweet, actually. And so, and then eventually it was served to Krishna. And Krishna picked it up and he went, Gave it to his cowherd friend. <laughs> he made a big face like, Ugh, this is terrible. <laughs> and then when his cowherd friend, one of his cowherd boys, he took it and ate it. It's nice. <laughs> it was really, really over the, you know, it was the best he could possibly describe and taste. Krishna did that because he wanted to share it with his friends. And he knew that's the only way he could do it, <laughs> is acting like it didn't taste good. Jai Sri Sri Radha Kukulananda Ki So there's so much we can say about Srimati Radharani. Today is my birthday. I was born on September 5th, 1973. I got initiated on Prabhupada's, by Srila Prabhupada on Radhastami in 1973. So that was 49 years ago. So this day is very special to me. Thank you. Give me a chance to be with all of you to celebrate Radharani's appearance day today really special for me on this day. Um, so now there is another part to the class, <laughs> which is a little bit, which is related, but unrelated. <laughs>